Today, the Holy Ghost will focus on the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus is the greatest name on earth. It's the greatest name. There's not another name that you can come up with that will be greater than the name of Jesus. Not only greater than the name of Jesus, will be more powerful than the name of Jesus. That name is above every name, every problem, every situation, everything that confronts you. Just remember, you have a name. You have a name that victory has already been invested in that name. So it, that's why I wanted them to sing this song. In the name of Jesus, all you need is that name. The victory is in that name. So in the name of Jesus, we have the victory. And who and what can stand against that powerful name? Philippians chapter 2 and verse 9 says, God has given Jesus a name that is above every name in heaven, in earth, and, strangers to say, underneath of the earth. Meaning that that name can control every demon, every problem, every situation. All you need is to know what is invested in the name of Jesus and speak that name. In the name of Jesus, we do have a victory if we would speak the name. Knowing what is invested in that name. The name is above every name. So when the enemy, any problem or situation confronts you, if it have a name, shout the victory. Everything has a name. Eva has a name. Judgment has a name. Fault finder has a name. All these spirits have a name. But if it have a name, guess what, brother? You can have the victory over every name because at the name of Jesus, every knee and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. His name is above every sickness, every problem, every stronghold, every habit. If you will speak that name and believe what is in that name, why would Jesus, why would Jesus give you a name that had no power? Why would he give us a name and, a, and commanded us in a sense to use that name? He said, in my name shall you cast out demons. In my name you shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Why would he tell his church that? If it was impossible, if his name was empty of his power, if his name was empty of his authority. No, he knew what was in that name. Amen. The Bible says that uh, God has given, how he exalted Jesus Christ because of what he's done. And has given him a name that is above every name. I said not some of the names, every name. but every name. Everything that have a name, you have power over it in the name of Jesus. The believers has been given spiritual freedom to use the name of Jesus. I have a right to use that name. That name was given to me to use. This is the name for the church to use. God did not leave us helpless. He said, I will not leave you helpless. I will come to you again. But I'm going to give you something that you need to live upon this earth. You need a name that is above every other name. A name that possesses the power that no other name on earth possesses. Nothing can withstand the power of Jesus' name. I don't care how great that person get. I don't care how mighty that person get. But guess what? You will never get so great that you would overthrow the name of Jesus. That name. that name. He said. Matthew 28 verse 18 says. Jesus said. When Jesus arose on the third day. He came to his disciples to assure them. 
that they don't have to be defeated. Assure them that they do not walk through the earth, struggle through problems, struggle through situations, beg the devil to leave you alone. You don't have to do these things anymore. But he came and took his disciples. The Bible said, Jesus said to them, I want to take first you at ease. All power. So don't ever start thinking that the devil has some power. The devil does not have any power. He has what you give him. You and your tongue give him power to use against you. Because what the Bible said, death and life is in the power of your tongue. Whatever power you want to use. You can use evil power. You can use complaining power. But it's in the power of your tongue. You make the choice. Set. All. You notice he didn't say some of the power, brother. Some of the power in your Bible. All power mean what? All power, he named the places that he had all power. He said all power in heaven, all power in earth, has been given unto me in my name. All power on earth, all power in heaven, has been invested in the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus possessed all power in heaven, all power in earth. Said it's in my name. Your victory is in my name. Your healing is in my name. Your deliverance is in my name. Everything that you need is in my name. Speak the word, but use my name. Say in the name of Jesus, Satan, I'm bound you. Okay, that's the key. The words are good, but the name. It's what make it happen. Amen. I love this song. Say in the name of Jesus, we have the victory. Say, tell me, who can stand against me? When I call on that powerful, wonderful name, and that name is Jesus, nothing can withstand it. Please, please remember this. If you don't get but one nugget from this teacher, Understand the name of Jesus and what is in that name and stop allowing the devil to push you around mm -hmm. like you're not a child of God. You not only have the name of Jesus, guess who dwell in you? Yeah. Oh, God, that always get me. He said, know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost that he dwells in you? Then he said, know ye not that your body is the temple of the Spirit of God himself dwelling in us. We not only have the name, but we have the presence of God Almighty himself dwelling in us. It always said, one cannot dwell without the others. They're all three. God, the Holy Ghost. Chief God, God, God the Son, and God the Father. They made their home in us. Yes. Who can overthrow us? I will have to defeat myself. But yes. there's nothing out there can defeat me. No person, no talking, no criticizing, no fault finding. You cannot defeat me. I will have to defeat myself. Why? I'm housing around. The Bible says we have this treasure in earthly investor. Why? For that the power may be seen coming from somebody. Brother, you keep on going, but I know you weak in the flesh, but something is in you that keep pushing you. It's greater than anything else in the world. He said, we have this. Oh, 2 Corinthians 4 and 7 and thing. He said, for we have this power. You have it. It's drawing you. It's drawing you. For that the power to exercise the name of Jesus will be seen coming from something. So says, Dr. Betty, there's something in you that would not let me go. But there's something in me that would not let me give up. Uh -huh. I don't care how dead it get, I know it fall, but there's something in me. Jesus. Ooh, yes. It might look bad, but there's something in me. Sometimes you just want to give up, but there's something in me. Yes, Lord. Lord, I'm a shaka. 
Musik har der nogen på sig. There's just something in me that to see like a sometimes it's keep me pushing. To see who grew up. I'm a sick woman. I'm a sick God. How much can I take for this something in me? That keep pushing me, that keep motivating me, that keep comforting me, that keep helping me. There's just something on my own. I will quit. But there's something in me. Sometimes people will persecute you so bad, you just want to give up and run away. But there's something on the inside of me said, no, it's not over yet. Keep pushing. Hold your head up high and keep walking because you know who you are in Christ Jesus. I promise you that I will never leave you. I never forsake you. I will always be with you. See that God put all these encouraging words in the Bible to encourage us to keep on going. Read the Bible. David said, uh, you know what? I didn't have no hope. I don't want to give up. But I read the word and the word of God give me hope. I can hope on Shika. I can hope again. Yet I wanted to give up. He said, but your word give me new hope. Shika. Home Shaka remember. I can live again. I can hope again. I can keep on going. Why? Your word give me hope. The word. You know, there's nothing more can withstand the word of God in the name of Jesus. The Bible says that God is thought of his word above all of his names. I can understand that. You know why? His word name all his names. So naturally, his name can't be greater than the word because the word name all of his names. You get it? So how can his word be greater than his name? He said God exhorted his word above everything else. Then he made Jesus above all things. Yes, he did. Oh, yes, he did. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus said to them, All power in heaven and earth has been given unto me. Believers, has been given again spiritual freedom to use the name of Jesus, to use all the power that has been given unto Jesus. You can use it. Every born again believer possess that same power that raised up Jesus from the dead. Supernatural power. Every believer that I'm looking at today, everyone that listens to this broadcast, you possess power to live a overcoming life. You possess power to never be defeated because you are housing around your own victory. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. oh, yes. oh, oh, yes. I'm not looking for victory. I'm not praying for victory. I have it. We have it. There is no wall between us and the devil. He's defeated. Read your Bible. The Bible says God stripped him of all his power and made a show openly out of him. Left him powerless. So he's not really our problem. You know who's our problem? Yourself. And your thinking. And your bad negative thinking and your bad negative speaking words for full of your power to defeat you. You struggle because of your own words. Just like, just like going paying a hundred dollars for a meal to get sick. <laughs> you ever been to? <laughs> you ever spent fifty dollars and leave the place sick? I said they called me that much to get sick. <laughs> we housing around. <laughs> what do you want? It's yours. In the name of Jesus. You said. Oh my goodness. Okay, all power in heaven and earth dwells in Jesus' name, making Jesus' name the greatest name on earth. Nothing can withstand, nothing can overpower that name. 
Start allowing your natural mind, your emotion, to make your decision. Because you feel like this and you feel like that. No, those feelings just was given for the natural man. But when it comes down to dealing with Jesus, there's no feeling that can tell you who God is. The Word of God has already told us who God is, and God already told us. He said, I'm telling you where I dwell, I dwell in you. So you won't have to go to looking all over town trying to find Jesus. Right. You know, we are, I mean, nothing's wrong with going to different places. But don't go looking for Jesus. He dwells in you. He lives in you. Hallelujah. You say, I know well much all that hell I've been doing. You mean tell me Jesus is still there? Yeah. Your hell doesn't run him away. He just let allow him to deal with you. See, you can do the hell, but you can't decide how you want God to deal with you. The consequences is on God, not you. Amen. You can say be gentle, all that kind of stuff. God, you don't tell me how to be work with you. <laughs> Lord, be merciful, hundred. God, you don't tell me how, how much mercy I need to give you. I know what to do to break you. It's time you need what I have to give you. Then we all won't be raising hell and tempting Jesus. <laughs> anyway, he said, Oh, power be given unto us. Jesus' authority is given to every believer in Christ. Why? To enforce. The victory that God has won for us at the cross. That's what you have the power for. That's why you have the name of Jesus. It enforce what God has done for you. God never planned to defeat, not for me, not for the church. So since I know that the Bible said that, but thanks be unto God, which always, the Bible did not say, sometimes he'll give you the victory. It said, but thanks be unto God Almighty, which always, always give us the victory. Yes. sometimes. Always. Defeat was never planned for a child of God. Because that's what the Bible said. What you said to me, God? I said, why? Because greater is he. Who is he? Was Jesus defeated when he walked upon earth? No. He said, greater is he that living in us. And you know, it's awesome. He said, greater is he that is in you. All these wonderful words of God keep convincing us I'm in you. I'm dwelling in you. Why do you act like you are alone? Why do you act so foolish when things come along? Why do you just wring your hand and what to do? The Holy Spirit probably screaming, what do you mean what to do? <laughs> Jesus not enough dwelling in you? Who else do you want to dwell in you to make All you right. live a victorious life? What else do you need? What else do you want? What you looking for? Hallelujah. No, it's on you. You make that decision. I, I choose whether I want to be defeated or not. The devil doesn't make that choice for me. If I only allow the flesh to take over and speak words for my flesh, that's my choice. The devil cannot make you do a thing. If he could, you wouldn't be here today. God said it was in your tongue. Yes, that's what it, is that in your Bible? Can the devil make you do anything? But why do we put everything on the devil? For we won't look bad. <laughs> Say, you know, we like to accuse everybody else, like Adam uh, uh, want to accuse his wife, you know that. So it always been out there. So every time you do something wrong, we always say that, that the devil, the devil, the devil say, I wish you Christian would stop lying on me. <laughs> <laughs> he said, Jesus, is there anything you can do to stop them? Because if I could do that to them, if I could do that to you, you would never go to church, you would never worship, you would never do anything. Matter of fact, I would kill you before you get to the church if I could do that. We always put everything bad on 
the devil and we ourselves bring it on ourselves, then we want to blame the devil. That's what you always be my face blaming me for. You the one wanting to do that. I, I mean, the Holy Spirit tried to tell you not to do it, but oh, you didn't pay the Holy Spirit no attention. And said, Jesus, you know I was a holy man, but that woman that you give me, she caused me to mess up. Jesus said, Adam, get out of my face. Get out of my God. You trying to blame somebody else to justify yourself. Hey, and then blame his poor wife. What kind of man is that? He said, get it. He wanted, Lord help me. Don't start nothing. He, you know what? He wanted Jesus to get her. Uh-huh. Don't say you're a bad woman, you. <laughs> he said, I got to blame somebody because I don't want to take the blame. It was the woman that God gave me when he wanted her so bad. He was so lonesome. So God, and he got bone in my bone, flesh in my skin. But soon as things came up, he flew him under the bus. <laughs> Tell the truth, shame the devil. You ever thought about that? Bone in his bone, the flesh is his flesh. But soon as something came up, he did not make him eat it. He glad it took it. And then when Jesus said, way I back. And I said, oh, what have that done? And he, it, it, it's your fault, Jesus, because you brought this woman to me. Did he use that and accept that as excusing Adam? He kicked him out. I guess for lying on his wife. He said, oh, Dr. Petty, you know he blamed his wife for everything. And I saw a lot of times that still go on. We a long time we like to blame somebody. Mm-hmm. It was that husband you give me. It was that wife you give me. Always. It's not me. I'm so good. And Lord, you know I'm a good Christian. God said, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't do nothing wrong. It just, just that. My, my wife just make me mad. That's why I act up. You ever hear that? I was good. I went to cuss her out and she would just act up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> He said, my husband, he just get on my last nerve. That's why. God said, that's no excuse. That is no excuse. I don't care what we use. We have authority to control ourselves. Stop blaming someone else. If the devil show up in this church, one Sunday say, look, I got something to say to every member in this church. I've been listening to you guys always blaming me for everything, right? He said, you need to read the Bible. You know I have no power. But the only power I have, I get it from you. Amen. Mm-hmm. So I just get to and get into your emotion and allow you to say defeated words. And those words are powerful words. It's my power. Mm-hmm. Your defeated words are my power. Your defeated words give me power. It's can use against you. So you think you're talking big, but you're sinking your own self with your own tongue. Uh-huh. He, said, then, he said, then you go before God. And tell God the devil made me do it. He said, How can I make you do something? Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. All the power in heaven and earth dwells in you. And you know, you just don't want to take the blame for your wrongdoing. So you feel good if you put it on the devil. Stop putting all that junk on the devil. That's you. The devil made me do it. Why can't God make you do something? Oh. Seems like the devil had more control over you than God. You're always talking about what he's doing to you. What is God doing? Wow. Okay. Oh, no, I don't, you know what, I, I you know, always pray, ask you guys to pray for me because I have a problem with that. I don't ask you for years, please pray for me. I have a problem with somebody telling me that the devil made me do this. The devil is busy. Who's giving him work? <laughs> stand up again and do that, sister. Come on out there. Stand up again and wave your hand. <laughs> <laughs> Who is giving him work? What kind of business do you have that you have to hide the devil? <laughs> the devil is busy. And nobody ever said the Holy Ghost is busy. The power of God is busy. He's changing my mind. He's opening up doors. I'm witness to people. I'm living holy. The Holy Ghost is busy. Yes. When is the Holy Ghost going to get some work in your life to change you? Amen. Why is always the devil doing so much? Yeah. Yeah. Hi, everybody. But we do that too. The devil, the devil, the devil. Who is the world? Right now, who saved you, the devil? 
asking that he can control you like that to get you to talk about him and speak highly of the devil. Mm. So highly of him. Mm. And you do all that speaking and hear God saying, where is my glory? Where is my authority? I'm dwelling in you. Mm. No, you just want to make an excuse for your weakness. Instead of accepting it, you want to put it on the devil. Like God said, I don't buy that junk. Said, I, you should learn that from the Adam and Eve. I didn't buy it then. I'm not buying it now. Yeah. It might make you feel good, but you're guilty. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. Yeah. If you would have had to go to court today for blaming the devil for everything, would they find you guilty? Yeah. Huh? If you had to go to court for blaming the devil for everything, but they find you guilty, what is that? Not guilty? Or they said, guilty as hell. <laughs> I think that a catch up.